there are some extraordinary things that are coming up this spring that you need to know about. So let me share these things and a few more things and details about King Charles III have been a little bit more unraveled considering the situation that's coming up and you need to hear this. It was just announced yesterday, December 12th, that this was posted. UK's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will visit Israel for the first time as Britain's premier next year as part of Israel's 75th birthday. This is Israel's Diamond Jubilee, the 75th birthday of the state and nation of Israel. Rishi Sunak made the announcement at the Conservative Friends of Israel's annual lunch in London, which was attended by over 700 people, including some 220 British lawmakers. What are the odds of the fact that King Charles III will be coronated May 6th of 2023 and Israel has her Diamond Jubilee May 14th? of 2023, virtually eight days after the coronation. On the Diamond Jubilee, Rishi Sunak, the Hindu Prime Minister of the UK, is going to go to Israel to be part of the festivities of the Diamond Jubilee of Israel. Now, do we know if King Charles will be attending with the Prime Minister. It has not yet been announced, but isn't it interesting to think that after all I've said about him being coronated as King and the Queen reigned for 70 years and now this could be the final seven of Daniel's prophecy and some other things came to mind about this that are quite mind-blowing because when you become king and you're coronated, when you take that oath and you're anointed with the royal holy oil that I spoke about before that has the ambergris in it, when you become king, you're actually coming into covenant with the people of the land. Now, when I told you that in English the words letteth and let, are a land lease. Now I'm understanding that in Daniel where it says that he will make a covenant with many for one seven because if this king is accepted as the king sitting on the throne which is said to come from the line of King David. And apparently, you know, there was something I quoted from Queen Victoria in the past saying that she believed that her royal line came from the line of King David. And she believed she was sitting on the throne of King David. And she was very humbled by wanting to meet Jesus and express this, you know, with a real loving heart. So if they believe that that's the throne of David that was never to end, listen to the scripture again. Think about Daniel 9.27. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. Confirm a covenant with many. So if this earthly king is accepted by Israel to restore the Davidic dynasty, because you see, if King Charles III is coronated sitting above the stone of Schoon, which is supposed to be Jacob's pillow stone, that he poured oil over in a covenant with God, and all of these kings have sat upon this stone when they were coronated, then they believe that they were sitting on the throne of David, in essence, 
sitting on the Lord's throne as it tells us in 2 Samuel. So this is a covenant that they could make with the new king sitting upon the throne of David, an earthly king that Israel is going to choose that's a political figure. And he would be sitting not only on the throne of David, but it would be considered the throne of the Lord. Simply because that scripture in 1 Chronicles 29-23 had said, Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king, instead of David his father, and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. So when the king takes an oath or takes a covenant with the people to represent them as their king, this could be the covenant that this king is making as he's becoming their king. Do you see what I mean? And because of this scripture that says that Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord, then you can easily see how if this king, King Charles III, is anointed at his coronation and because of his Jewish circumcision and all of that and having the genealogical line that supposedly goes back to King David, then that would mean he would be not only sitting on the throne of David, but he would be sitting on the throne of the Lord, according to this scripture. And now you can see what is happening. Now you have to remember that we are going into a time where Jesus is going to return to sit on the throne of David forever. And in order for that throne to be there, you know, when he comes, they're going to put an earthly king to reestablish the Davidic dynasty. And I believe they have stated that they're going to have the Messiah perform the red heifer sacrifice that will do the purification to allow them to rebuild the temple. All of this would come together. You and I don't really have any concept of kings and queens and the depth of their majesty and the pomp and all of the details that go into a true monarchy experience because we have presidents and they come and go. But the royalty is something extraordinarily different and God says he was going to sit a king upon the throne of David forever. So I began to realize that the covenant with many could just be when he is anointed as Israel's king because he's taking an oath, a covenant with many in Israel and all the people that live there, of course. If he becomes their earthly king, the last reigning monarch before Jesus comes, then this covenant with many for one seven could very well just be him being coronated and being accepted by them and them as having him their king, he would be ruling the land. And there are land covenants. And when I told you that revelation I had about he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, well, we're talking about land deals, land covenants. We're talking about the fact that there's going to be something allowing the temple to be rebuilt, the restoration of the Jewish monarchy, the Davidic dynasty returns, and them purifying the Temple Mount area where they and the people with the ashes of the red heifer all of it is coming together and because this is not just King David's throne I'll say it again I'm realizing he's sitting on what's considered the Lord's throne so that scripture makes sense to me now he that will sitteth and take his seat in the temple of God proclaiming himself that he is God that's because he's sitting on the throne of David the throne of the Lord as king and I wrote a huge section in my book which was published in 2015 about the king being married to the land 
and this is part of the oath and covenant that the king takes. So now you can see he's making a covenant with many because he's becoming their king. And he's allowing the temple to be built. And halfway through, you know, the sacrifices are going to stop and cease. I can see how all of this easily comes together when he's sitting on this throne that's not just David's throne, but the Lord's throne. And I'm trying to reiterate it so it sinks in because it's becoming very clear what it means. And if God told David that his son Solomon would build his house, the temple, and that David's throne would be established forever, then doesn't it stand to reason that they that Israel is going to have an earthly king reestablishing the Davidic dynasty that's going to be rebuilding what they believe is the rebuilding of Solomon's temple? And this would be a king sitting on the earthly throne that would allow this last seven years to happen, which is Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble, and it makes sense. And of course it says about Jesus um, that God will give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And that is Luke 1, 32 through 33. Let me just read Isaiah 9, 6 about Jesus the Messiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, if Queen Victoria was right and she was sitting on the throne of David and King Charles III is about to be coronated on the throne of David, then when Jesus comes, he will you know, take over the throne of David forever. He sits on the throne of David forever as the eternal king. So it's very fascinating. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And when you say God is going to perform this, it means he's going to carry it out. He's going to accomplish it and fulfill it. It's an action, a task, and a function. Something to a specified standard. And of course, Jesus is the royal standard of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, the Hindu Prime Minister of the UK is going to be part of the Diamond Jubilee celebrations of Israel. No doubt that the newly coronated King Charles III would likely be a participant in that monumental 75th birthday of the nation of Israel at its Diamond Jubilee. What are the odds of those two things, King Charles III's coronation, winding up being in the same month, only a few days apart, a week apart or so, of Israel's Diamond Jubilee. And the FIDF says, we're on a mission, 75 miraculous years of Israel, a diamond anniversary. This coming year marks an incredibly monumentous occasion for Jews around the world, the 75th year of the establishment of a Jewish state, Israel's diamond anniversary. There are so many reasons to celebrate this dream fulfilled, and what better way to honor the miracle that is Israel 
than by experiencing it with Israel's soldiers. I'm just wondering, are you realizing how rare and unusual this, uh, I guess you could say, swirling and moving of pieces of the puzzle is in God's timetable? Because the queen had to have a 70-year reign, and then she passed away for King Charles III to take the throne. And he's very much friends with Rabbi Mervis. Rabbi Mervis is going to be there with Rishi Sunak there during these celebrations. And more than likely, King Charles III will be there as well. It has not been announced, as I said, quite yet, but it will be. And right after his coronation. This is going to be the most hyped holiday of this year, Israel's 75th birthday. Although Israel was founded on May 14, 1948, its Diamond Jubilee celebration will be by the Hebrew calendar on April 26, 2023. Although it's not that far away, they are organizing celebrations to be the greatest modern Jewish miracle Few Jewish organizations or Israeli leaders seem to have noticed or started planning. And it says, um, last May, this was in the J Post, uh, Jerusalem Post, I tried triggering some brainstorming about how to celebrate this culmination of the Ark of Zionist Triumph starting last August with the Zionist Congress's 125th anniversary, building through this November 29th, with the 75th anniversary of the United Nations 1947 recognition of Israel and culminating with Israel's 75th birthday. Celebrating those three moments boasts the idea of a Jewish state, the world's recognition of that idea and Israel's realization of that noble, liberating idea. Now, as we know, they said that King Charles might add something to the oath, the covenant that he makes with the people at the coronation. And I would like to read this because this is details of King Charles III's coronation oath revealed. Though King Charles is due to inherit the title Defender of the Faith, his coronation will include additional wordings to reflect modern multicultural Britain. The late Queen Elizabeth II's coronation speech in 1953 included one key line in which she promised to be defender of the faith, upholding the rights of the Church of England. Now this is, you know, the Church of, of Christ. This is the representative of Christ. And this is a title which has been used as part of the full style of many English, Scottish, and later British monarchs since the early 16th century. And we've already talked about this, but I'm just, I'm just adding this because it says, you know, he will exalt himself above all these gods as he's sitting on the throne. However, the Daily Telegraph has reported that while King Charles III is also due to inherit the title Defender of the Faith, a clause will be added to recognize that he serves all religious faiths, and not just the Church of England. According to reports, palace aides and church officials are planning to include these additional words into the ceremony to act as a statement of intent to reflect modern multicultural Britain. It is thought that the wording would be included either before or after the oath. The king has long worked to promote interfaith dialogue. In September of 2022, just days after he became monarch, he vowed to protect the space for faith itself promising religious leaders during a Buckingham Palace reception that he would uphold the numerous religious cultures, traditions, and beliefs to which our hearts and minds direct us. And this was King Charles he, when he did um, a Hindu celebration. Whilst it was previously reported that the king was considering 
altering the oath to make himself defender of faith or defender of the faith, such a move would require a change in the law. Now it's interesting that it says about the one who is to come that he will change times and laws. Could this be the law that he's changing that will change the face of Britain to be, you know, a king that's not just defending Christ and the gospel, but all of these false god religions as well? Could that be the law that he changes for which there is not enough time ahead of the coronation. It is, however, likely to be amended ahead of the coronation. So, in their report, Swearing in the New King, the Accession and Coronation Oaths, academics Professor Robert Hazel and Dr. Bob Morris said the oath taken by Queen Elizabeth II no longer suits a country in which a wider variety of religions are practiced. The unit suggested a number of alternative oaths that could be introduced ranging from a modest alteration to a more radical rewriting. It said that not only should the current oath be updated in time for the Prince of Wales accession to the throne, which he's now King Charles though, I don't know why they're saying that, but that the government should make clear ahead of King Charles' coronation that the oath would be amended. In 1994, the then Prince of Wales outlined his views on the relationship between the monarch who is supreme governor of the Church of England and supposed to be representing Christ and the gospel, and other religious faiths saying, I personally would rather see it as defender of faith, not the faith. Because it means just one particular interpretation of the faith, which I think is sometimes something that causes a deal of a problem. It has done for hundreds of years People have fought each other to the death over these things, which seems to me a peculiar waste of people's energy when we're all actually aiming for the same ultimate goal, he said. And that was a quote of King Charles III. So could it be, if he is sitting on the throne of David, as the reestablished Davidic dynasty of the king and monarchy of Israel, the deadly wound that is healed that we see in the book of Revelation and the monarchy is reestablished through him and then he's sitting on what is Jacob's pillow stone having the genealogical line of King David allows the third temple to be rebuilt the temple of Solomon so to speak not exactly Solomon's but a, you know this is what the Masonics believe and if they believe that he's sitting on the throne of David, which is ultimately the throne of the Lord, the throne that God made a covenant with David on, then can't you see that he could easily sit in the rebuilt temple, you know, exalting himself above all these other gods, so-called gods of these other religions, and proclaim that he is God because he's sitting on the Lord's throne? Doesn't that make sense? I mean, it's stunning to realize this. And the king takes a covenant to um, be married to the land. So, letteth and let is like a land lease. And this all falls into place. And I'd like to add this, this is from The Trumpet, and it says the London Evening Standard published an article on July 23rd titled, Will William and Kate Call for the Rabbi? It said, Queen Victoria, convinced that the British royal family was descended from King David, had all her male offspring circumcised. The tradition continued through Edward VII, the Duke of Windsor, and Prince Charles, who was circumcised by Rabbi Jacob Snowman, GP at Buckingham Palace in 1948. So here we have this king.
that will be the reestablished king on that throne of David, born the same year that Israel was born. This king. And this is the generation that will not pass away before all these things come to pass. Do you have the chills yet? His generation, because he was born the same year Israel was born, and he's going to sit upon the throne, what they believe is the throne of David. And it says, well, it does say that his brothers, Andrew and Edward, also were circumcised, but I read differently and reported differently that they were not. Just King Charles, but that was information I had before. But sadly, this article only scratched the surface of what Queen Victoria believed about the throne from which she ruled. Any student of the Bible knows that circumcision is taught in the Bible. The ancient Israelites practiced it to demonstrate their belief in God. Queen Victoria believed the British royal family was descended from King David. And it says, did she know that God made a covenant with David that his throne would continue forever? Probably so. Did she always know that she was actually sitting on God's throne? And they said, uh, this is from, I think his name's David Flurry from the Trumpet. He says, which we prove in our book, The United States and Britain and Prophecy, the very throne from which Messiah or Christ is about to rule this earth after he returns, perhaps she did. Did the queen know that God promised in the Bible to punish the rulers on that throne if they forsook their part in God's covenant with David? Her belief in circumcision would seem to indicate that she did. It's interesting that the trumpet goes on to report, The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Jesus Christ, he says, is not going to return and sit on a non-existent throne. He's going to rule from David's throne, the same throne supposedly Queen Elizabeth was sitting on when she was ruling and reigning. And that would go for Queen Victoria, and it would pertain to when King Charles III is coronated. He says that throne continues to this day in England because of God's covenant with David. The king spoke of this covenant just before he died. It says, quote, Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. Yea, does not my house stand so with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. For will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? 2 Samuel 23, 1, 5 says, God made an everlasting covenant with David. The throne of David will never cease, even throughout eternity. Anybody who sits on that throne today is a part of that special throne covenant made with King David, whether they know it or not, or whether they like it or not. They also have a serious responsibility, whether they realize it or not. Queen Victoria had some understanding of that responsibility. So the, what I'm saying is in the book of Daniel, remember that when you're reading the prophet Daniel, you're reading this prophecy from someone who was in the monarchy. He was a prince of Judah. This monarchy was thriving before you know he went to Babylon and the monarchy was ended with the putting out of the eyes of Zedekiah and the shriveling of the hand, the ruling arm, which God brought a sword against his people. That's the deadly wound by a sword. And now the nation's been restored and that monarchy will be restored quickly and speedily, I believe, because I believe this is who they're going to put on that throne. And he's the one that's going to sit as king on a seat in the temple. And because it's the Lord's throne, the throne of David, he would proclaim that he's God because he's sitting on the Lord's throne, the throne of David. Now I also have to add here, I was telling you all of the scriptures that the Lord was showing me that I put together, that I realized that Israel and Judah 
and their monarchy, they played the harlot, the scarlet harlot, against God. And he said that they were clothed in scarlet and purple. And I showed you all of that scripture of how when she was exiled to Babylon, she was saying, um, it said, Woe to the lowly city who once was full of people. She once was a queen, but now is a widow. And in Revelation, when it's talking about mystery, Babylon the Great, there you have her saying, I sit a queen and am no widow and will see no mourning, which is lamentation, which was over in Lamentations. And you've got the whole book of Hosea that reveals to you that Israel and Judah, that whole monarchy was the scarlet harlot. And it just goes into grand detail about that. So now you've got every corrupted thing of Babylon and all the nations coming together to meet up in Jerusalem with this one world religion, one world government that King Charles III is about to be coronated and unbelievably circumcised by a rabbi and he will be the one called the anointed one because he will be anointed under the authority of the Holy Spirit when they do the, the ceremony of anointing him with the holy royal oil. Now you have to remember about, it's also revealed with King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And I just want to tell you this because there has been a huge misinterpretation of scripture about the Queen of Sheba. She was not an Ethiopian. She was from Arabia. And she had the territory in her possession that was around the Mount Sinai area in Arabia. And the Queen of Sheba um, in southern Arabia, we know from geography this was a wealthy kingdom with much gold, spices, and precious woods. History also tells us that they were known to have queens as well as kings. She came to Jerusalem with a very great treasure, with camels that bore spices, very much gold and precious stones, and she came to King Solomon. She's speaking to the king sitting on the monarchy, and she brought all of these treasures, spices, precious woods, precious stones, and pearls, and all of these things that we see in the book of Revelation, that she has, the scarlet harlot. And to top it off, the gold that King Solomon received was, I should say, the weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was the 666 talents of gold. So this is the number of the cipher of the king. This is going to be in the future, I mean. When they put this king on the throne, and he makes this his mark, it's the king's mark, the royal cipher. And let me say right here, this was nothing revealed by Tim Cohen in his book, The Antichrist in a Cup of Tea. What he was talking about was King Charles, which was Prince Charles back in 1998, his heraldry and things of that nature. But... The dream that I had was the royal cipher, and that was revealed to me this year because after the queen died, only then, this year, was the royal cipher of King Charles revealed. So this was not something in Tim Cohen's book. It was something from a dream that I had that I told in another video. So I want to make that clear that the royal cipher was not created until after the queen died this year for King Charles III. So you've got... You've got a king that's going to reestablish the throne of David, sit on the Lord's throne in the newly rebuilt Solomon's temple, and his royal cipher is going to contain the 666. And that's going to be the mark of the king. I don't know what all it incorporates. Um, it's his title, his crown, and his number and his name that is on the royal cipher. So will it incorporate something in the health community that we all know about? 
Will it include um, the uh, zero carbon stuff that we've talked about? Because when I told you in my video about the Royal Cipher, Cipher means zero and they are going for net zero. So that number would be incorporated with the newly established king. When I said that the deadly head wound had been healed, you have to remember that when Nebuchadnezzar had his dream, he was the king and he was the head of gold. So Israel's monarchy, God brought it down because they were corrupt. And God gave all of this judgment would come if they did not keep God's covenant. And that's what happened. So now here in the book of Revelation and in Daniel, you see that he will make a covenant with many. And when a king is coronated, he takes an oath that's a covenant with the people, with the land. And he's considered married to the land and all the people obey the king because they're underneath his kingship. The Queen of Sheba went to Solomon. You know why? Because she heard about Moses being at the mountain in Arabia. This is what the Lord revealed to me, that she is ruling in the area of Arabia. And she's heard about the fame of these kings of Israel, of Judah, because Moses and the people of Israel went into Israel after leaving Mount Sinai in Arabia, and they entered the Promised Land. So the Queen of Sheba went up there to get his wisdom and knowledge and all of that. She took all of the gold and spices and everything she brought there. Un unusual animals, you know, um, all kinds of gifts, spices and precious wood, precious stones. And this is what we see in the Scarlet Harlot in the book of Revelation. One of these commentaries says, um, but it may indicate that the Antichrist may not be someone purely evil from the very beginning. Instead, he may be like Solomon, a good man corrupted. Kind of like an apostasy. If Israel takes him, believing that he's sitting on the throne of David and the throne of the Lord, and they think he's, you know, doing good for the world because they've all got this plan, which we know about. And he's one of the ring leaders at the WEF that's spoken there, as well as Rishi Sunak. You can see this whole thing coming together right at the time of the coronation. Right after that is Israel's Diamond Jubilee within a week. So let me just summarize that that is what I see with Daniel's prophecy. He was speaking as the royal uh, prince and he was there with other princes of Judah taken to Babylon. And then here at the end, we have the reestablishment of that monarchy. And we have a king sitting upon the throne and then the temple being rebuilt, which is what Daniel prayed for because the temple had just been destroyed by Babylon. And he was praying for the restoration of God's holy mountain and ultimately for God to descend and come back to his mountain and dwell there. And that's what's going to happen after this earthly king does this short reign. And the king of kings comes back to sit on the throne of David forever. How extraordinary all of this is unfolding before us. The covenant with many could very well just be when they reestablish the throne of David and accept him as their king, and he's made a, an oath, a covenant with many, to be their king and to be... Basically, he'd be married to the land, and then he would have say over the divisions of the land, and people would be obedient under this king because they would be part of this restored monarchy of ancient times 
that was blinded and withered. And now God is going to come restore his mountain and he's going to come back and the presence of God is going to reign in that place for eternity. What an extraordinary a revelation about that and how it's just incredible how Queen Victoria believed that this was the throne of David she was sitting on and she had exclaimed I said in one of my videos about how she just wished that she could live long enough to see Jesus sit upon that throne and he's coming and he's going to sit upon that throne but first these times have to be fulfilled for Israel and the ancient monarchy to be restored and remember they had said in Israel with some of the rabbis that they expect that the Messiah is going to perform the red heifer sacrifice so this would all line up with the red heifers being brought there and coming up with this diamond jubilee the 75th birthday of Israel and the coronation of King Charles the third what do you think about this only God could be putting the pieces of this puzzle in place it's just absolutely extraordinary the times we're living in so anyway thank you for watching please support me and my channel and my work I am in a, a perilous time right now I have not had my car since Thursday I had to try to beat this snowstorm that's coming and I took a huge long 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 walk to get groceries at the store and carry them back which was difficult on neuropathy feet I really pray that God opens a door where I can speak about these things and have uh, my career be in you know with this testimony of the Lord that he gave me he's going to perform it quickly and speedily and that's what he showed me I just wanted to share all of these things and wondered what you think about it so there you go pretty extraordinary and I love talking about the King of Kings at the time we're celebrating the fact that he came into this world and that he was the light of the world that shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out so let your light shine celebrate the season of the lights and celebration of the Lord he's the glory and the kingdom that reigns forever on the throne of David I'll see you in the next video or on the next live thanks for watching